starter gasket gasket uh Ryan's also shit Now, before I put everything back together again, I need to make sure that all of these surfaces are clean because obviously I do not want any vacuum leaks. I'm just going to start off by removing all of this, yeah, with some menorah blades. Now, I've gone ahead and cleaned up all of the other surfaces on the components just so I can sort of figure out how to do it properly before I record it and explain to you guys how to do it. So, you want to start by taking your little menorah blade, or rather your little razor blade, if you don't have Gillette menorahs in your part of the world, and you just fold your little wax paper into, over the edge that you'll be holding on, because these things um, are quite sharp, and it would suck if you cut yourself. Then you want to start by just twisting it a little bit, put some tension on this part where it will meet with the material, and then applying slight pressure, keeping it at about, I want to say, 10, 10 degree angle against the surface, you just sort of scrape, almost like you're shaving. Taking extra care for this not to dig into the aluminium because this steel, even though it's paper thin, is much harder than the aluminium. So it will dig in and it will ruin your surface. You start by doing that just to sort of remove the very worst of the RTV that is stuck on the surface. Once you are done scraping off the worst of it, you want to take your blade and hold it at a 90 degree angle compared to your surface. And you just sort of want to scrape at it. Just scrape at it. There's really no nuance or technique to it. You pinch it, hold it, and scrape it. And obviously try not to dig into the aluminium because you don't want to leave any scoring marks. And then you just go at it. Yeah, there you go. That's about as clean as I am going to get that. Now, the real challenge lies ahead because I need to do all of that cleaning up. Here, inside the V, doing my damnedest not to get any debris inside the engine. So, I'm sticking to my trusty menorah blade, but now I've also got a vacuum cleaner. Okay, that took me a good 32 minutes or so. Um, it was not fun. Hands cramping. Both of them are in fact. Uh, I better not have any vacuum leaks. And I damn nearly forgot about it, but it is finally time for the main event. Main event. I gotta get the starter back in. Now, normally with these starters, one of the one key things that make them very, very difficult to remove is the orientation of the bolts. Normally, they face the firewall. And in some cases, that means you gotta remove the entire engine in order to get to the starter. Which means when the starter is on and it's on like this, this bolt will go in like this. Like that. So, I've got an idea. Why not? Because in theory it should work. I mean, pff, bolts work both ways. So, the idea is 
just do this. I mean, I already checked a socket. This is a, a 14 mil bolt, by the way. A socket will fit in that little space. So, in my head, that should work. Now, due to that, I believe it's a water line, there's also a little harness going to the starter. Due to those two things, I will not be able to get that bolt in from that side. I'll be able to get this bolt in on that side, but something just feels wrong about the two bolts facing different directions. So I'll just put them back the way I took them out. Okay, so it turns out my little plan of turning the bolts around 180 degrees would not have worked in any case because the threader the threader the starter is threaded so you can thread the bolt into them tighten them the block is not so if i were to flip the bolts around 180 degrees i would still have a very much unfastened starter so yeah that would never have worked okay so it is the next day and um first order of business would be cleaning up all the surfaces so that they are ready to get the gaskets on or gasket and the RTV because I couldn't find all of the gaskets and to do that you'll just need a shop rag and some acetone and then it's simple you just sort of apply the acetone to the rag then well wipe down <laughs> the surfaces there's no way of explaining that you just do it because the acetone just helps dissolve and clean up anything left over that you couldn't scratch off with the menorah blade earlier and I'm going to stop recording now because obviously you do not want to watch me wipe down aluminium with a red rag. That's boring. Okay, all the surfaces have been wiped down. Surfaces on there as well. And look at all the gunk. Ah, there goes the rag. Look at all the gunk that's come off. This is just from wiping everything down once. I think I'm going to do a second pass just to make sure that everything is as clean as possible. But I'm going to use a fresh rag for that just to make sure, obviously, that everything is as clean as possible. I do not know why I repeated myself there. And look at that. Even on the second pass, the gasket surfaces were absolutely filthy. Some on this side as well. But yeah, um, good I did a second pass. And acetone does um, evaporate fairly quickly. But just to make sure, I'm going to take a clean, dry um, shop rag. And just wipe everything down a final time and then I can apply some Victorines. Now, I've already got my gaskets and everything close by because once you've applied this rinder, so you have about five minutes before you um, need to get everything assembled because it starts to form a skin after five minutes and then it won't work as well. So you apply it and then immediately need to start assembling lest uh, risk it not doing its job properly. <laughs> Okay, so as you saw, I've only got that water manifold in and the bolts are hand tight. I'm going to give the rindersole a few minutes just to set before tightening it down completely. In my mind, that would make it work better. And while I do that, I'm going to go Google the torque specs on the bolts for the intake manifold because I feel that that might be important. And with that done, now comes the really fun part. Now, before I go ahead and finally tighten all of this up, go through the final stage of talking it down, I want to show you guys this. This is the fuel pulse dampener. Do not confuse it with this, which is the fuel pressure regulator. This serves an entirely different purpose. And it's a specific, there's a specific way to put this together. You've got this little crash washer and this little washer as well. This crash washer goes against the fuel rail and that will sit between the fuel rail and this little banjo bolt. Now, I, I need to figure out how to get that done. So my idea is put that through there. I believe this is a 22 millimeter bolt. Just got to use a little spanner to tighten that down. 
And you'll also notice there's a little Phillips head screw on the top of this. Never ever fiddle with that. Don't touch it. You might just um, throw the entire thing out of whack. But yeah, on with it. Now, when tightening down something like an intake manifold that needs to make a good seal, you want to be sure to tighten it down in a cross hatch pattern. So that would be from this corner, that corner, this corner, that corner. And then you've got another set of bolts. This corner, that corner, this corner, that corner, and then your two central bolts. In total, there are eight bolts, and you've got to fasten them all. I like doing it in stages, so I'll do it hand tight, go through all of them, just a little bit overhand tight, then I'll do the final torque down, and then I'll check them twice to make sure that all of them are still as tight as they need to be, because sometimes you tighten this bolt, then you go through all of them, and then once you've tightened all of these, this bolt will become loose, and you want to catch that before the entire thing rattles itself into oblivion. Now, the correct torque spec for all of these bolts on the intake manifold are 18 newton meters of torque. We do not have a torque range that will do 18 newton meters of torque. It's it's barely, it's hardly anything. So um, I guess I'll just use the quarter range or this little T range of mine and um, I guess I'll feel them out and hope they are right. There you go, that's that put back together again. The battery is currently on charge. I want to wait for the Rhinos to fully cure, so that's going to take 24 hours before I try starting it. Obviously, before I put water in it and then try starting it. Um, and then after I've started it, I'm going to put all the covers back on because just in case I made a mistake, I would want as little strip work as possible to reverse said mistake but I don't think I will I will have made a mistake I'm pretty damn sure I did I'm pretty damn sure I did good work I hope hi there future one here it's been 24 hours so let's see if this thing will start just gotta tighten up the battery terminals that's just oh wait wait it's tightening sweet the other one Yeah, that's tight. Key. Let's get this, let's get this, let's get this. Get that primed. I smell fuel. I smell fuel. Yep. Fuel. I missed something. I think I forgot to tighten that down. That's not tight. Okay. Because that has an aluminum crush washer, so logic dictates that that needs to be pretty tight in order to seal. Let's try again. So, fuel goes from the fuel tank into there, into there, goes all the way across here to the fuel pressure regulator. Note, the fuel pressure regulator is not connected to anything. I have no words. Ah. Uh, huh. Aha! That's the fuel return line. Okay, so there is now a lot of fuel pulled up in the V of the engine, but luckily I have a vacuum cleaner and this thing. Okay, time for take two. There you go. So far so good. Don't hear any leaks. Think I don't smell anything. All is well. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Key. That's good.
I guess I missed a wire or something somewhere. So. No, I did not record me removing everything again because I wasn't very camera friendly. Um, so yeah, if you could not tell, I forgot to plug in a single, single pin connector. Now I have to start all over and replace the intake manifold gaskets again. 